Mr. Uh, Mr. Chait Mensa Bonsu has joined us on phone for a quick conversation on this. Now, uh, uh, Honorable, a very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, and thank you for having me. There are some reports and concerns being raised, and uh, part of it has been attributed to you, saying, for instance, that um, if government goes ahead with the domestic debt exchange program in its current form, it's likely to wipe out some individual bondholders, uh, you know, especially with those within the middle class, and uh, you are demanding for more consultations. You think that the current decision to extend it gives ample time for government to, you know, undertake this engagement you, you advised? Thank you once again. We are in a democracy, and in a democracy, the axiom is that what concerns us all should be decided on by all of us. Now we have the Ghana Individual Bond Holders Forum come to us in Parliament last Friday. And even though um, in general we recognize the situation, the dire circumstances that we find ourselves in as a country, um, they related to the fact that in particular the uh, bond holders uh, were not consulted in before the rolling out of the program in respect of the general of the uh, bond holders uh, that is in this whole deal of the domestic debt exchange uh, program so i i said to them i just rehearsed what i've just spoken about but what concerns all of us should be decided on by all of us and I say that I know that some consultations have gone up. However, by their own account, it does appear that if as they related to us that they were not consulted, it means that the consultations perhaps were not broad enough and were not comprehensive enough. For which reason I, I said that in that regard, we carry their concerns to the government, in particular to the Minister for Finance, and then we see the best way forward for all of us. Because there was concerned that, yes, as you related to me, um, these bondholders, about 90-95% of them belong to the middle We've not forgotten as a nation what happened in the early 80s, about 40 years ago, when people's holdings in the banks were decimated. And that really had uh, a negative effect on the um, um, the culture of saving in this country. Building this has taken quite a long time. And um, if maybe because of inadequate consultation, people become apprehensive, uh, apprehensive and lose confidence in um, the in saving, that may become a difficulty. Mm. Again, they related to the fact that uh, mm. some of them who are pensioners are depending on the yields to take care of their medications, to take care of the fees of their kids, and so on. So we want to interrogate this and see what to do to save lives and protect livelihood. So that's at the, at the, at the heart of the discourse that we had with them. Right, and uh, Honourable, would it have been out of place for Parliament, for instance, beyond what the individual bondholders and it actually started from uh, labour unions who are asking for their pensions not to be touched. But in the, uh, in the wake of all the public agitations and confrontations and commentary about the domestic de debt exchange programme, would it have been out of place for Parliament and maybe under your leadership, for instance, to call the finance minister or the ministry to really look at these concerns that are, were being raised? Because uh, there are those who are saying that now that it is going to do what it should have done much, much earlier, it's quite late in the day. Better late than never. And if in the process, we're able to rescue some people who might have plunged to death, that would be beyond salvation. I believe even if we're able to rescue one or two of them, it still would be worth the effort. But let me say this, that uh, nobody really, as we started, 
knew the full ramifications of this whole program. And this is those of us in Parliament. And um, I, for the first time in the life of Parliament, before the final consummation of the budget, we did subsequent presentation to Parliament. We, we had some engagement with the finance minister who spoke to us about the broad contours of the budget that was to be presented. Mm. Um, the details, as we, we got here, never was part of the, the discourse. So um, I would say, and don't forget, that up to that time, we, we had not also concluded the discussions of the IMF. Right. So perhaps the finance minister himself, perhaps the finance minister himself, uh, maybe didn't didn't have his hands on the full gamut of what uh, the conclusions were going to be. Right. So um, we are all learning, and as I'm saying, if matters have arisen beyond our own comprehension, why not come back to the drawing table and have some necessary engagement? With, uh, with the people. Um, we're not forgetting the fact that some, even some members of parliament themselves are involved in this. They are, they are, they are also mm. affected. But it's oh. not because of them that we are concerned. Okay. We are the representatives of the people. We should be concerned when we are concerned. Okay. Honorable Osei Chairman Sabonso, thank you very much for your time. He's uh, the majority leader in parliament and also the representative of the people of the Swami constituency.